Welcome to the Songwriters Across Texas podcast. This state has a lot to offer, and music is one of its greatest exports. On this podcast, we get to know songwriters through their stories and hear some of their music. Today, we're at Arlen Studios, and my guest is Billy King. I'm Carl Anderson, and this is the Songwriters Across Texas podcast. Raised in Harlingen in the valley on the border, William King grew up speaking both English and Spanish. His parents' amicable divorce led to quite the extended family of step-siblings where both his maternal and paternal grandparents taught him the piano. He had taste for all instruments from the start, while listening to The Doors, Tom Petty, David Bowie, Van Halen, Zeppelin. In the sixth grade, he picked up drums, and the seventh, guitar. It was straightforward classic rock for him. Looked like he was going to have a music career, but a strange turn of events out of high school had his parents and grandparents both discouraging him from a life in music. He graduated in 07 and went to A&M, first on a biochemistry major, then to poli-sci. Completing a degree, he moved to Austin where he could get a job at the Capitol and please his parents and still go play music. It didn't take long for the music to prevail. He met guitarist Cameron Wren in 2014 and the two had a crazy symbiosis. They formed Billy King in the Bad, Bad, Bad and started taking their act to the stages of the Mohawk, the Empire Ballroom, and the Far Out as main stages in Austin. Their old school music Please, as an old school rock guy like me, welcome to the show, Billy King. How's it going? It's going good, man. What song you got for us to start us off? This is an unheard tune. Ooh. One of the first ones that Cameron and I ever uh, did together called Rebel. It's about, you know, just being young kids doing nefarious activities. <laughs> well... I'm a drinking man Let's try the whiskey man Put a glass in my hand I'm bound to lose control Well, I'm a loving man A woman wanting man Baby, give me your hand I'm Let's try to token man Put a joint in my hand I'm bound to lose control Well, I'm a lunatic man A downright crazy man Then take you long to figure out I'm out of control It ain't none true Well, you folks have heard about me, girl It ain't none true It ain't none true Well, I don't want to live my life Just to keep on working And I don't want to spend my time just to keep on living Pass me a cigarette, I'm keep on smoking Pass me that LJ, I'll keep on token That's right, I'll keep on token Ain't no 
nothing gonna get me down. Nothing gonna get me down. Ain't nothing gonna get me down. Ain't nothing gonna get me down. Thank you. What do you? What's the name of that? Uh, Rebel. That's a great one. Man. Oh, thank you. Thanks for being here, man. Uh, let's talk about your, your humble beginnings in uh, Harlingen, yeah, South Texas, on the border in the valley. What was that like? Uh, it was interesting. You know, uh, it's like an amalgamation of Mexico and America, where it's like not really. The United States, not really Mexico. It's kind of like this cool own little world. Um, right. Honestly, uh, it was pretty great at the time. Whenever I was growing up, I didn't really care for it. Uh -huh. But you know, at least there was a beach, literally twenty minutes away. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, like by the time I had a car, I was getting up early and just going out to surf every morning nice. before going to school. I was gonna say you look like so you had cool. a surfboard. Yeah. <laughs> were, were you speaking Spanish too? Like, did everybody yeah, speak I mean, Spanish? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of like Spanglish, you know? Everyone's talking in English, but oh, we use Spanish words at the same time. It's a weird right. thing, like a Tex Mex uh, melting pot. It's pretty cool. It is cool. We've had a few people on the show that have been, like, Alex Ruiz is kind of from down there, and he described it in a similar way. Yeah. And there's definitely not a lot of guys like me with long blonde hair down there. Right. Uh, so, did that was that trouble for you? Oh yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, pretty much like going through the checkpoint, coming back to Austin anytime I'm pulled over if my oh. hair isn't uh, up. Right. Like they'll stop me and search my car. Um, I got pulled over a lot in high school just for nothing you know they just basically stereotype me as this guy uh, how, that is going to be selling marijuana around town probably and uh, totally. <laughs> that's how they did it to us in the 70s and 80s you know like it was like if you grew here and they probably were half right you know yeah. like i mean at that point in time i definitely never smoked or drank in high school it was college from you me. you didn't smoke any in, in high no, school. no i didn't drink or do anything i was like uh pretty sheltered as a kid, uh -huh. you know, I was the oldest and like, I don't know, my mom just wanted me to be the poster child for perfection, right? So I just uh -huh. tried to do everything to make her happy. And uh, yeah, I never really partied. And it wasn't because I didn't want to. It's uh -huh. just that uh, like I, m my friends, we didn't do that. It was just kind gotcha. of that thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I didn't even like seaweed until I was in college. So. And then what happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, it changed my life. <laughs> yeah, it did. It did. We were talking about it earlier. I mean, it's a, it's it's legal for a reason. You know, I mean. Right. People uh, criminalized marijuana. Uh, Richard Nixon. There's tapes of him in the White House, you know, blaming the Jews of all people. Like, I don't know how he got on that. But. Uh, yeah. But well, he, and then like, Reagan with War on Drugs. Yeah, you yeah know, exactly. That definitely, yeah. Uh, that when that was a way to keep the prisons full. Exactly. Yeah, but and then young white boys like us that grow our hair, we kind of got, we 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 became. Oh, you, know, you can get, go to jail too. If yeah. You, you know, but nobody wants to go to jail. Dude. No, no, nobody likes jail. <laughs> but even, honestly, it's the jail. Yeah, nobody. It, well, probably some people do get used to jail. They say that the, the you know the lifers they just, they don't know what to do with themselves outside. Yeah. Of well. It, it gets to a certain point where it becomes easier. Right. Um, you know, it's tough whenever they put all these restrictions on you as if, like, if you're a felon or something like that where you can't get a job or anything like that. Right. And then it makes it even more increasingly difficult for you to even uh, become a better human, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, and then it just turns out that sometimes it's easier to go back in. I feel like that would probably be me, too. Could, yeah. Um, so, but you did, so you didn't get into any real trouble as a high schooler but you did find um music really young yes tell me about how the music came to you and how the drum set came about and... yeah yeah uh so i mean pretty much as soon as i could walk my grandfather on my mom's side was teaching me how to play piano uh and then so i just started at a very young age doing that and uh then my grandmother on my dad's side uh, also taught me. So I had 
two forces teaching me piano. And then uh, my grandfather was actually an incredible drummer. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he was a percussionist all throughout middle school, high school. And like when he was 18, he hopped a train and rode up to West Point and walked on to their drum line. Uh, Wow. He basically, you know, uh, was on their drum line for about four years. And then he went back home, went to college, met my grandma. Uh, But he was the one that also taught me drums. So uh, when I was in fifth grade, I remember the band coming to town. And originally, I really wanted to play saxophone. Mm -hmm. uh, But, you know, I saw the jazz band and this guy's kicking ass at the drums. And I was like, that's what I want to do. And uh, Mr. Figarelli was my uh, band instructor. And he was the guy that was like, you got to do percussion. And (laughs) uh, I guess with my skills in piano, they put me on marimba and xylophone. So I never even got to play any kind of drums. (laughs) Interesting. But it it still was the rhythmic thing. Oh, yeah, definitely. And then uh, in seventh grade, the jazz band needed a guitar uh, player right. and I was like, well, I have a guitar, so <laughs> I jumped in. Where did that guitar and, come from? Was it your dad's? Uh, yeah, so it was my dad's. Um, essentially, when my dad was sixteen, somehow my gra- my step grandfather uh, knew the CEO of the drum division of Gretsch because um, it was from Boonesville, Arkansas. My whole family uh, they lived in Fort Smith at the time. Okay. They asked him when he was sixteen, like, "Do you want drums or a guitar?" And and my dad was like, I want drums. And uh, <laughs> my step-grandfather was like, hell no, I'm not listening to this guy bang on these drums all day. He's getting a guitar. So uh, it was called a Hagner uh, after his name. And there were one of five only ever made. Um, and wow. so that was kind of like my hand-me-down. Whoa. Um, and they have like old school filter trons that they don't even make anymore. Like the ones these days are a lot different. Um, so the ones back then in the 70s, they... Uh, I don't know. They just resonate differently. Uh-huh. Uh, so this guitar is like my like baby. And you still have it. Mm-hmm. And I only use it for recordings. I don't play uh-huh. it live or anything. How old is it exactly? Uh, well, when my dad was 16, I would say that's 78. So somewhere around there. Yeah. Nice. So you get... You get that, and then you start playing guitar. Yeah, so whenever they needed a guitarist for jazz band, I was like, well, I'll just teach myself how to play. And I started reading tabs. I don't know. Uh, Explain that. Uh, <laughs> in the early days of the Internet, um, <laughs> yeah. you could basically uh, teach yourself how to play songs. Uh, they would put, like, yeah. what number of fret you needed sure. to play on what sure. string. And so instead of reading notes, you read tabs. these tabs. Yeah, and you. so that's how I learned chords and how to play guitar in general. Wow. Yeah, guitar CC. So you really taught yourself with these tabs. Yeah. But you are like you have the your musicality is coming from all this really the the, the classic rock foundation. Yeah, and I mean that's because of my parents. They just love to listen to that kind of stuff. Right. So your both your grandparents are teaching how to play, and you're you're thinking you're gonna you know get in the music and all of a sudden they none of them want you to get into it yeah and uh you know i feel that it's because my grandfather came from experience he used to tour in big swing jazz bands uh in the like early 50s Mm -hmm. and so i mean shoot back then a lot of alcohol probably a lot of heroin so he probably right. witnessed all that, and he was just like, you can never be a part of this. Like, you're going to... And guns, too. Yeah. People were getting ripped off left and right yeah. back then. And, and I mean, day. shoot, all the... How many cats in there? Uh, Tales from the tour bus where right. everybody shot somebody, like, if they didn't yeah. get paid. Yeah, exactly. Uh, but, um, yeah, so with that, uh, he just was like, what my father told me is that there's always going to be somebody better than you, son. And I was like, well, that's a terrible thing to tell somebody. Right, right. And honestly, yeah, there's obviously always going to be somebody better. I hope but, so. you yeah. know, if you're having fun and loving what you're doing, why does it matter? Like, because right. then, I mean, honestly, he changed his life and did a bunch of things that he was really good at. And, uh, you know, maybe that was his path. But for me, I just didn't feel like it was my path. And then for them to try to tell you what your path is and right. give you a bad thought yeah. about your idea for your path, that's a part about that. Oh, yeah. Well, and then on top of that, they were like, 
it's not a blessing to have talent. They said that it was a curse because you can't focus on anything other than doing your passion. Uh, to be talented at anything was they just felt like it was your curse. Well, like yeah. you can't uh, th stray what, away from it. That's what they ended up with from their own experience. That's yeah. sad. It is. But what's nice though is that you get to do it and do it proper. You know yeah, what I we'll mean? try to. Or, or, yeah, or, or, or you'll allow yourself to do it and go for it. That's what they couldn't do. Yeah. I'm guessing. You know, like I think a lot yeah. of times when I think of uh, parents and children that the children are trying to help their parents progress in some way. Right. Right. That's the whole idea of having kids almost is you'll be better than me. And you'll yeah. figure this part out, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. But fortunately, like my dad, he never was like telling me that not to do anything that I want to do which was cool. Uh, and my mom, she also supported me a lot, but she just wanted, it's not that she didn't want me to, she right. just didn't want me to have to struggle. Right. When did, when did you start writing? Probably about 14. And then I joined a band. It was a terrible metal band uh, called Chain Reaction. And I was bass, and I was a freshman uh, in high school. Yeah, and <laughs> we got banned from our uh, high school talent show because of we smashed an acoustic guitar on stage, and they said that we could have electrocuted somebody. We ran around with a pirate flag on the stage, and they were like, <laughs> basically just uh, said that we were doing like ridiculous that things was, that, that was, was too that much was, for them yeah. down in harlingen yeah and so they actually canceled the talent show after that we never had another one Dang. Uh, and then uh everybody that was in the band they were all seniors and so i'm the freshman and they were like we got to kick you out of the band because we're moving to austin and uh you know we can't wait around for three more years for you to graduate right <laughs> so, well that's a tough that was the end of that. Up right there yeah yeah and then after that i started writing pretty much okay yeah, so. did you put then did you find kids your own age and make a band i did yeah but i was doing more like solo stuff okay so it was called uh so at a certain point when I was younger, uh, my last name was changed from King to Reynolds. Right. From my step grandfather. Uh, anyway, it was called Will Reynolds and the Rap. Bill, like, Willie uh, Reynolds and the Rap. Yeah, like uh, aluminum foil. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even put two and two together. Yeah. <laughs> that's great. That's, but, a, you know. that's fantastic. You got to start somewhere. Yeah. Names are, you know, Billy King and the Bad, 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 by the way. That's a crazy good rock and roll oh, well, name. Thank you. So King was the original name, and you got had to get it back. Yes, essentially. And that's what my grandfather, uh, he was Billy King and uh, like in our family. Uh -huh. but, um, yeah, my dad is also Billy King, and then I'm also Billy King. So Billy King is a great name. Yeah, I like it. Billy cool. King. <laughs> Can you imagine Tom Waits saying Billy King? Um, <laughs> he does have a perfect voice for it. Yeah, he would. <laughs> um, so you get uh, you get through high school. You're you're really kind of ready for something more, right? Yeah. And Austin was it Austin right away? Oh well, so yeah, I went to College Station. Oh, that's right. To you went to, that's, yes, I forgot yeah. about you did that to do all that poli sci stuff. Yeah, but that actually kind of uh, was probably the best thing mm -hmm. I think. Um, just going to A and M, like uh, you know, traditionally there's a stereotype of students there, mm -hmm. and the guys like us or gals as well or non. Uh, binary uh all of us that were outcasts uh we kind of like found our own separate group uh and like unlike anything i've ever found in austin like we would meet up weekly to work on poetry together uh write songs together and like we would just help each other out on their own stuff so like right. people would help me on my music i would help them on their music or their poems and no one was trying to like take advantage of anyone or steal their right. like ideas. It was just kind of uh, like this little artist haven. Yeah, yeah, just where we could all express ourselves and kind of grow. I and, had that. I had a group of kind and, of people uh, in and, high school like that as well. I mean, it's nice. It's important. Yeah, it is. It's and uh, so that was really really cool. And then after graduating, I moved to Austin because. But, like, but what's music, interesting, you told me yesterday that. Um, 
that you and you just said it again that you haven't found that same thing in I Austin. I have not, yeah. And I find because almost everybody that goes, man, the reason Austin was so appealing was because people were open and generous, and they would sit down and write with you and try, try to help you be better. And, yeah. Uh, at least open mics are also useful for that because then you can meet people that are pro probably right around where you're at. Definitely. And so did you start hitting some open mics when you got to Austin? Uh, I did. And then um, pretty much that's kind of how it blossomed. Where did you go? B.D. Riley's? Is that where it uh, was? Well, yeah, I went there. Um, there was this place on 71 and Congress across the street from the expose. Yeah. I actually don't even remember uh, what it was called anymore. It's been closed for a while. Oh, yeah. Also, expose is closed, too. <laughs> yeah, I know it's the red rose and yeah. stuff. You know. But uh yeah, so that was the spot that I can't really have everything. <laughs> <laughs> that was the first club I actually went to, which is funny enough. Nice. Yeah, it was terrible. Did, did, you don't like strip clubs? No, it's not my thing. I've had some times <laughs> in strip clubs. I I don't find them to I mean I'm 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 good without them these days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, how about we do another song? All right, this is a uh, possession of Paul Revere. I hear your main man calling. I hear your main. Took out the back door running. He had his hands there all over me. All over me. He came in with the wind, had the devil in his grin. Two black eyes a day swallowing you. Entering your soul, he's in. You're letting him in. Psycho terror, he'll keep you around. Oh, he'll take you down. Oh, he'll keep you around. Surprise, it's just his disguise. He's in your little man, he's in, he's in, he's a bloodthirsty killer. He'll take you down, he's a psycho terror. He'll keep you around. He'll keep 
down. Take you down. Where does some, how do you come up with that? Uh, what's the inspiration behind that song? Uh, a lot of listening to Rocky Erickson. Okay. <laughs> nice. I like yeah. it. I thought it was like a, one of those Nick Cave murder ballads. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, I mean, Nick Cave is great too. But uh, yeah, the evil one, that album of Rocky's uh, really resonated with me for that kind of song. Nice. <laughs> now, they, and Rocky influenced a lot of people. Yeah. Honestly, probably the coolest thing. Was it one of our first shows as Billy King and the Bad, Bad, Bad was uh, opening up for him for his 70th uh, birthday party. Nice. Yeah, at uh, Sangarande. I was about to say, did you get to, sit, to meet him ever? You yeah. got to open up for him? Yeah, it was cool. Oh, it was man. Very cool. I actually got to film him a couple times just as like a seventh camera guy, a floater. Yeah. I'm not even really a good <laughs> kid, but somehow I was in with that camp and they're like, and I had a camera and they're like, do you want to do this? It was actually one of the coolest things ever was watching him through the camera. The camera eye is an interesting thing, right? Yeah. Because it sees more than your own eye. Oh, definitely. So like I was watching, I was like, look at how these guys are trading, you know, just the exchange of the music through the camera eye is so cool. So, you needed to find somebody that was a good bandmate, writing partner. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I feel like I'm, like, mediocre at every instrument, but not, like, excellent at a single instrument type of thing, you know? Uh, which is cool for writing, because rhythm, easy, right? But uh, uh -huh. I mean, I, I just, I kind of got to go, okay, you're being humble. Yeah, that, no. <laughs> But, uh, like, Cameron, I mean, he is just an insane guitarist. The first time I heard him, I was like, oh, I... Where was that? Uh, so, yeah, we, in 2014, uh, it was October, the week before Halloween, mm -hmm. uh, we were both in orientation for this company called Signpost. Uh -huh. It was a automated marketing for small businesses, you know, just selling you a bunch of bullshit, mm -hmm. basically. Mm -hmm. uh, they're like... Yeah, we could definitely set up your Facebook, uh, get you on Google, and uh, set up your Yelp, you know, and It'll we'll take care of all that. It's all automated. Yeah, yeah, a lot of money, you know, that you have to call cold calling, you know, right. on these people trying to convince them that they need your business. Right. right? Yeah. And uh, so anyway, orientation, <laughs> yeah. right? Uh, <laughs> Getting ready for a life of this. <laughs> yeah. Basically asked you to get up on the first day, and they were like, say your name and three things about yourself and I just said that I like to play guitar and write music and uh, Cameron got up and he was like I like to play guitar too and so <laughs> <laughs> I afterwards I was like you want to I'm trying to start a band do you want to like jam sometime and he was like yeah sure and so the the weekend uh, before Thanksgiving uh, that year we jammed for the first time and that was it I was just like oh my goodness wow yeah, I was in my apartment with just two acoustic guitars. I was showing them everything. And then uh, two weeks later, uh, Signpost had a talent show uh -huh. <laughs> at work for Christmas. And uh, anyway, so we did the talent show, and that was our first show. That's you know? awesome. <laughs> That's funny. But so you kept working there. Yeah, yeah. Well, Both for like six months or so. Oh, and then funny. he worked there for a year. Okay. I had to quit. I was like, I can't deal with this. <laughs> yeah, I've had uh, several jobs like that that maybe made it six months. And yeah. you're like, okay, I'm getting a, some kind of experience, I guess. But yeah. Gotta, gotta get out of here. Well, the money was just terrible. The base pay was 20000 a year. And then <laughs> you get commission. But if you don't make any sales, you're getting 20000 a year, which is about... Six hundred dollars every two weeks or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so it was bad. I couldn't yeah. even pay my bills. Uh, so then I started driving for Lyft and Uber after that, and then right. got back into bartending. And okay, yeah, that, obviously bartending is a good way to generate money pretty quick. For sure, How was good, the, quick, was the Lyft money. and Uber thing uh, lucrative? At it all? was very lucrative okay. until I uh, blew my <laughs> head gasket. I warped it and uh, had to fix that myself, and that took about three months. So you know how to fix it. No, I learned. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, you yeah. really can teach yourself anything, huh? Well, YouTube. YouTube University, man. It tells you everything. <laughs> That's true. They got videos, uh, how-to videos for just about everything. Yeah. So it, you guys, <clears throat> you left after six months. He left after a year. You're, you're playing, and is it already Billy King and the Bad, Bad, Bad? Uh, well, so at that point, we were just playing and didn't really have a name. Um, we were just 
Will and Cam. Uh -huh. uh, and then we were coming up with names. And so, like, the Summoners was in the, the running. Summoners. And I was just like, well, then it'll sound like we're too heavy, you know? And then uh, <laughs> Grave Danger, I was like, that's a cool name, that's too. A good and then, rock name, yeah. uh, then I have no idea how it came to me. It was probably a drunken night. And, uh, you know, I was just like, I love alliteration and repetition. And I was like, Billy King and the bad, bad, bad man. What about it? And then it just stuck. So Yeah. <laughs> and the bad, bad, bad. Yeah. There's a lot of implication there. <laughs> it's great. So when did, how long did it take you guys to start getting gigs? Uh, yeah. Well, so that took us a while because, you know, so we started jamming in 2014. And then we kept uh doing craigslist ads to find drummers because okay. at that point you know we're both new to town i didn't know anyone really in the scene i yeah. started going to shows a bunch and then started meeting people but we were also doing the craigslist ads and trying to find a drummer and then we would find a guy and either they were really awful and we would just have to be like i'm sorry this isn't going to work out or we'd find a guy that's like oh hey this is actually going to work out and then after about three months they're like oh, this isn't really my style of music uh-huh so then we'd have to start all over again we didn't even have a bass player at the time, so we just started with two guitars and drums, and I was playing through a guitar amp and a bass amp with a splitter pedal and just trying to get a little more How did low that end out? sound. It sounds it worked. It sounds like it, it was probably really cool. <laughs> it was cool, but I mean, it was still like you didn't have that low end feel, you know, that thump of the bass. Sure. Uh, but I mean, it was still cool enough to get us shows. And then all of a sudden it was like, Everyone was asking us to play shows, and we kept saying yes to shows. So we were playing like two or three shows a week uh -huh. for like the first two years. And some people didn't like it. They were just like, who the hell are these guys coming out and just playing all these shows? And I was huh. like, well, you got to get your name out there, right? Like, <laughs> And you got to get good in front of people. Yeah, exactly. It's all practice, too. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so. That's the whole point of Austin in a lot of ways. Yeah. I mean, it, like the, the, a lot of the musicians I know that make a living here, they that make a living as a player they don't it's not necessarily here they're making their living there but except they have stages where they can be so fresh all yeah. the time so they can take it at, back out and get paid yeah definitely right so you were taking your reps early yeah <laughs> that's good i like that's why but that it shows in the music yeah, well, hopefully so. <laughs> I, I can tell you it does. You're going to have to believe me. <laughs> um, so then you guys, you actually start playing, like, after years, you're getting good. Did you, when did you record? Yeah, so we recorded uh, our first EP in 2017 uh, with Tony Esparza at his house. And mm -hmm. He mixed and mastered everything. And then uh, in, after that... We started getting more songs and stuff, and in 2018 we got best new Austin band runner up. Really? Yeah. Oh, I, okay. And after that year, <laughs> uh, so back in the day with uh, the Austin music polls, um, you could vote um, and get people to vote yes. for you. Yes, so for sure. like I was literally going out every day. I'm, I'm bartending, right? So I'm telling every single person that's a patron at my bar, like, hey, <laughs> yeah. Uh, vote for us for best new Austin band, right? And so uh, we got a lot of votes, and then all of a sudden we got runner up, and they were like, "Who is this band?" Like, uh -huh. you know, they. I feel like they were kind of upset because then after that they closed it to open voters. Uh, right. It was like you had to, you know, be an insider to vote on it. Um, so you think you you're the you're the reason they switched? It? <laughs> no, I don't that, think no, so. I know, but I it was just one of those I've things played. where it like happened right after. Yeah, yeah. It, it was hard not to. Get Wait a minute. Yeah, <laughs> and then so we got uh, Black Fret because of that, which was awesome. Uh, and then so that tell, gave us tell a, everyone about Black Fret. Yeah, real so quick. Black Fret, um, great organization that essentially gives grants to Austin musicians um, in varying amounts, and essentially it just helps you grow as a musician. It just helps marginalized musicians. Um, and so we got a grant and uh, recorded with Chris Frenchy Smith at the Bubble All right. uh, for our next record. Um, and then that kind of helped us. Uh, we met up with Brett Orison of Spaceflight Records and then got on there. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, Spaceflight, uh, I don't know if you know about it, but no. uh, it's, an, it's the first and only nonprofit record label. Okay. Um, so they, they're also there to help marginalized musicians. And uh, everybody that 
uh, is on their label gets a hundred. They own their music a hundred percent. So they're not out there to like, you know, do that whole scheme of like, well, we're going to front your record and then right. you know you owe us in the yeah. back end. They're there to help you, and it's all nonprofit. And they just teamed up with Third Man Records too. Oh, great! So it's going to be a new thing in Austin. I feel like it's kind of incredible. And you're in there with them. Yes, that's thanks. Great. Thanks to Brett Orison. Yeah, man, great. Yeah, that's, he's a founder. That's awesome. So, uh, is it mainly uh, the uh, your the stages that you play Mohawk, uh, Far Out? Uh, yeah, Mohawk, Far Out, Empire, Hotel Vegas. Uh, Those are all great places to play. We played Little Darlin. I nice. mean, Palmer Event Center, uh, Moody Theater. Um, played the Moody. Yeah, and then. Like at Cactus Cafe. That's a um, prestigious gig. Yeah. I feel like <laughs> the sound guy said whenever we played Cactus Cafe that we were probably the loudest band that's ever played there. <laughs> so That's saying a lot that people have been playing there for like 50 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Well, um, wh- when's the next record, did you say, just then? Uh, when, oh, what's so, coming out? yeah. Well, uh that one was released in 2020 on Halloween. Our next one probably won't be out till next year, but we've got a couple singles in the works right now, going to get released later this year. Um, we're just teaming up and trying to get music videos done, do a proper release. So. Yeah, for sure. Uh, we got time for one more. You got one more song for Let's us? Let's do it. All right. All right. This song is called Tiger Den. American motion picture girl And yeah, you get that feeling inside It's like I'm all shook up and I can't help it No matter how hard I try You can't fight this feeling Understand But you know you need it And you know the reason why Remember that time we were hanging out at the Tiger Den till 9 a.m. Yeah, those are good times, baby, but that ain't me anymore. I'm trying to change. And through the clouds of cigarette and marijuana smoke, all I saw were your eyes and your eyes alone. It's when I knew I had to have you, baby. Had to love you, had to be with you. You can't fight this feeling, understand. Can't find 
that's all we have time for today. Hey, Billy, thank you so much no, for coming in you. here and telling us your story and playing us some music. I, I can't wait to hear the next record and what y'all going to do. Uh, from here on out you guys are incredible if you've all been watching this on the cw and you want to see an extended version go to our youtube channel songwriters across texas and check it out also uh, the bad 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 dot com the bad 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 <laughs> dot com spelt just like it sounds <laughs> thanks again man thank you great job mm -hmm.